<clears throat> I sure can. Sure can. Right on, Scotty. All right. How are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. I, Antoine, let me use this microphone. And I love Sounds good. I'm going to pick it up oh, to show oh. Nice. To show this, it's such a nice microphone. I feel like That's I, for nice. real, like a like a like I'm a radio host. Dude, your hair is <clears> funny because yeah, it's, it's like <laughs> it's yeah, That's awesome. It's awesome. I'm jealous. Whole, or live, okay. Yeah. All right, perfect. Well, um, welcome to our webinar today. How we uh, get started in this hot market? How do we beat the heat? which I'm pretty sure the Celtics wish they would have known how to beat the heat when it comes to this real estate market. But um, today we're going to share some tips with you and actually look at the market as a whole. Um, so Scott and myself have been doing this real estate thing for a while. We've learned some tricks of the trade. We've seen some trends. We know the seasonality of everything. And we realized that uh, in the summer, the market definitely gets hot. Um, and not just for the temperature outside, but because there's more buyers and more sellers. Um, so Scott, if you want to take it away from there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know um, I've been to uh, whatever it's been called as the Pacers have played there. Bankers Live, Conseco Fieldhouse, uh, Market Square Arena. Uh, yeah, beat the heat. I said that a lot. So yeah, um, it's a thing. Uh, and it's hot today. I heard some thunder just a few minutes ago. So that's awesome. Um, okay. It's going to be a thunderstorm yeah. later than probably. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, what we're really going to talk about today um, is is just kind of dealing with the the market, how it goes up and down with the seasons, especially here in Indiana. Um, you know, we're affected more by by weather and holidays and things like that. So, um, you know, just going to kind of just talk about the maybe the pros and cons of it. If you're a buyer, if you're a seller, um, mm -hmm. you know how how trying to time things can work out, um, how it how it might not. Um, maybe some, some trends in the past and some, you know, upcoming trends and everything. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what we'll, we'll want to talk about. Um, yeah, Joseph, you're still a little fuzzy. I think I it's am. like I, blurring on I, you. I, yeah, it yeah. is here. Let me, I'm going to change my background. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. I'm there a, you go. I'm a little blurry. Let me see. And I'm, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, now you're not, but yeah. No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> How is that? A thing okay maybe i should yeah stay still just like this there you go perfect <laughs> perfect y'all get to see my not so flattering angle so <laughs> or maybe this is the perfect angle. i don't know remember back in the day when people used to do like their little selfies from the bathroom and they had the camera up here anyway <laughs> sorry yeah um, no i mean we we'll just jump right in um you know some things that i was reading while preparing for this is that some some professionals, some uh, people that really study the markets, um, you know, what they're kind of predicting is that this summer could actually be even hotter, you know, than last summer's market. Um, there's, there's predicting prices are still going to keep rising, you know, not as much as they were a couple of years ago, um, but prices are still rising, uh, especially around here. You know, our, our supply and demand has always has been very consistent lately. Um, but then also, um, this now we don't Joseph and I don't have crystal ball or anything like that, but um, there are some economists and some some real estate professionals and specialists that are predicting even uh, a, like a leveling off or even a slight decline in, in interest rates. So if you uh, take a hot market with super high demand and you decrease the interest rates a little bit, I mean, what's that going to do? <laughs> yeah, that drives higher. up more demand <laughs> even more absolutely yes. absolutely and that's something that um i've heard so many people say um you know is i'm just going to wait till the interest rates go down mm. and there's there's nothing wrong with buying a house with a lower interest rate but what what's going to be hard about that is if you're waiting right now until interest rates decrease like we just, you just answered the question, what happens when rates decrease to, to the demand and, and maybe even to prices, they're going to go up. You know, demand is going to go up even higher than it already is, which around here, it's super high. Mm -hmm. um, so when people say, I'm going to wait till interest rates drop, my first thought is like, that's cool. You, you know, your monthly payment might go down a little bit, but um, you're going to, it's, God, it's going to be competitive market. 
Right. And then for those who, and I, we always tell our clients to not focus so much on the interest rate, focus on what you can pay monthly. Now, if you, if you're comfortable with, with what you can pay monthly and the type of house that you get with that monthly payment, go with it. Um, it's never a wrong time to buy a house. Um, I, I want to rephrase it. So there's, there's always a, a time to buy a house and then there's always a better time to buy a house. Um, and the better time to buy a house is yesterday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, so, and some people are trying to wait until, you know, the really low interest rate comes back around. And like we said, that's going to drive up demand. So then, you know, what happens there? If you wait till that low interest rate comes, more people are going to flood the market. And typically that happens around summer too. Um, so with more people in the market, which is more competition. So now you have more competition, even though that interest rate is very, very low. What does that mean? That means you're going to have to bid even higher. You're, you know, the prices get more competitive. Um, so that you end up paying maybe 10, 15, 20 grand over asking price for that house. Whereas like if you got into a market where the interest rate wasn't extra favorable for you, but it was still a good enough interest rate to where you got into a home with that monthly payment that you were good with. Then when the interest rate drops, guess what? You're already in the home. You already exactly. won. Now what you have to do is just take advantage of that interest rate and refinance. Absolutely. So absolutely. It. Yeah. Uh, if you get a house now, you know, there's always going to be someone that will get a house when interest rates do go down and say, well, gosh, I got this rate. You're like, well, gosh, I've been in my house for three months and I didn't have to do a $20,000 appraisal gap. Um, mm -hmm. And now I can refinance to your lower rate. So yeah, I don't, you know, a lot of people want to brag about their interest rate, but maybe they don't start bragging so much about how much they overpaid or, or vice versa. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's, yeah, trying to keep up with the Joneses just doesn't usually work out with mm -hmm. much of anything. So um, right. yeah, that's, that's a, a big reality is, as interest rates go down, if they go down, when they go down, um, yeah, you're going to be overpaying for housing. You're going to do an, a higher appraisal gap. And I always tell people, even when like inspection negotiations, mm -hmm. I would rather have cash in hand and pay 20 or $30 more a month, uh, you know, in, in a lot of cases, not in every case, it's not right for everyone. But mm -hmm. I mean, if, if uh, someone's paying $15,000 or $10,000 out of pocket, to have an appraisal gap because they waited until the interest rate went down, you know, what did they really save? Um, right. So yeah, that's a real, real thing. So um, like you said, the, the, the time, the right time was yesterday um, for sure. You know, trying to time the market is, is tough and yes, some true. people have to, but right. some people don't, <laughs> you know, if you don't have kids in school, um, mm -hmm. which school is the school calendar is a very, um, it's a very real thing for people in, in housing, you know, trying to find the right house at the right time, um, oh, especially if they're a own, an owner already. Um, if you have a lease that ends in November, you're, that's probably when you're going to be looking. Right. So, uh, you know, maybe, well, hopefully maybe a few it doesn't matter. Before that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you right now. Looking, yeah. Probably. At the, yeah. Like right now. Or Let's get together you know, right now. Um, yeah. Um, and speaking of that, Scott, um, because you brought up a very good point that uh, the school year. So, like we said, the summer is a hot market. And more often than not, the reason for that is because a lot of people that we've talked to who have kids who are in school, some people who are school teachers themselves, I know your wife is a school teacher, um, that, you know, that summer break is really when they have the time or when they're wanting to be able to move and search for that home. The kids are out of school, they don't have to juggle practices and things like that. And I know there might be some mm -hmm. summer practices, but it's a lot less than what it, what it would be during the school year, which is typically from, from fall to early spring, uh, late spring. Um, so generally when we see people who say, you know, I want to wait until this time, like that's fine if you absolutely need to, and that's going to be great for your time. Um, but you want to keep in mind, most people will probably do that. So then if more buyers are waiting to buy when the summer hits and when late spring, early summer hits, and same thing with people who already own homes who want to maybe upsize or downsize, if they're also waiting until the summer hits, what does that do? So that's Man. more into the market. And now we're still in a, what we would call a seller's market. Um, our market absorption rate um, is still about one month. Um, 
and you'll see that there's uh we have data to 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 show you that as well that uh, when the when the seasonality kicks in, you'll see the market absorption rate, which is, for those of you who don't know, market absorption rate means how long can we not list a single house before we run out of the houses that are already listed on the market, right? So right now we're at one month at the beginning of the summer, which means no, if nobody else lists a home, we're running out of inventory, okay? Now, granted, more people might want to list their home, but that's also more competition between sellers. But even more so, for every seller, you probably have 10, 15 buyers that are still looking, okay? So if that increases, then the number of buyers will exponentially increase. So then we're, at, we're, we're still at this level here. We're still fighting competition, right? So how do we navigate through that, Scott? What do, what do we do to make sure that we can get through that market? I uh, would just start, start the process. <laughs> um, yeah, um, statistics show that uh, between 40 and 50% of all listings during a year get listed in, uh, I think it's uh, April, May, and June. Mm -hmm. So in, the, in that three month section, nearly half of all listings go active. Um, and therefore, you know, June, July, August is when the majority of the sales take place. So, um, yeah, yeah. When if you're gonna wait until if you're a buyer, and you're gonna wait until almost or until a vast majority of people want to buy the same thing you're wanting to buy, that doesn't usually work out in your favor. Now, if that's the timing that you're you're stuck with, and we'll, we're gonna help you out. We're gonna make it you know as painless as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but it, we just have to know what we're up against. And, and Joseph, you and I, when we're doing buyer consultations, I mean, we're straight shooters. We're gonna tell people. This is what it is, but we've dealt with this before. We deal with this every year. Here's what we're going to do for you. Um, right. And then likewise, if you're a seller trying to sell something uh, at the same time that everyone else is wanting to sell something very similar, more competition. So um, yeah, it's like you said, when if listings and buyers are here, uh, you know, or listings and buyers are here, at least they do go up at about the same rate at the same time, yeah. but our demand around here is just always high. Right. So true. So true. And one thing that I, like we say, we always talk to our buyers and sellers about is we, when we get together for a consultation, we give them these numbers like, Hey, this is what the market is going to look like. And so for a lot of the people that we talk to, we don't, we're not just looking at, at that moment. Um, so a lot of people, for those of you who don't know, real estate is a 90 day business, sometimes even longer. So people that we're talking to right now, might not even be prepared to sell or buy for the next 90 days. So that means we need to talk to them early. So people who are looking to buy or sell in the summer markets, it would be nice to have talked to you probably last month and the month before. Um, but now that we're talking, if you are looking to get into the market now, set up a time to talk to your local real estate agent, talk to us, let us help you figure out, all right, if we're going into this type of market, how aggressive do we need to be with our offers? But how do we still protect ourselves when we're in this market? As a seller, how aggressive do we need to be in marketing our property, but you know, still not over overdo it to the point where people are like maybe pushed off by it. And then you're sitting on the market for a long time because the other competition was maybe priced a little bit better than you. So there's lots of different, I guess, mediums of competition that we need to look out for. You know, and again, for buyers is going to be how aggressive we need to be as far as offering and looking, how diligent can we look? And then for sellers is going to be, how do we position our property? And price is position. So you want to keep that in, in, in mind. Um, and as the, as the months tick by and it gets hotter, uh, more and more people start looking, but you also have this effect as well. You will have people start to get disheartened in the market too. And we want to avoid that for you guys as much as possible because the home that you're looking at now might not be available if you decide oh I'm going to wait there's no guarantee that it's, that home is going to pop up again or you know a deal's going to fall apart we want to make sure that we get you in the right position at the right time um so you know starting now is the best time um uh, Scott I'm sorry I was I went in oh, yeah. a little bit but yeah. no it, no that's good we're going to preach uh for sure um I, you know, my strategy um, is I really want to be showing houses when nobody else wants to be looking at them. Um, Memorial Day just happened. I got two people under contract um, during 
the the holiday you know session because I scheduled showings on Memorial Day. Um, you know, wrote the offers, and you know, I think probably both listing agents were um, already gone or headed out, and said, you know, they're they'll look at the offer when they can. Um, but I, 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 that's when I want to do it. I remember one of the biggest sales I had was um, a snowstorm, and I, I, I said, if you guys can make it, this could be your dream house, and it, it was, and it is, and um, I, I mean, I'll take advantage of that for buyers especially. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, when someone says, I just want to wait till everyone else, to, like that's not what they're saying, but that's what they're saying. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're yes. saying it without saying it. I just want to wait till everyone else wants to do with this one thing. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it is it is disheartening. Um, but, you know, like we said, timing is what it is. Um, now for sellers, we'll kind of talk about that a little bit. For sellers, a lot of times a seller is also a buyer. Um, so they don't really have the luxury of selling. A lot of people say, when's the best time to sell my house? Well, if, are you buying something? Yeah, we'll need to buy something too. Well, if you're selling when property values are really high, fantastic when you're on your sales side, but now you're probably going to pay higher for your purchase. Um, mm -hmm. Or if you're if you want to get a deal when you buy, you're probably not going to get a, a super high amount when you sell. And again, we have strategies in place to, to deal with that and to maximize our seller's proceeds and minimize the pain. Um, but, but yeah, if they're buying and selling at the same time, you can't have it both ways. You can't have super expensive houses so that you can get top dollar for yours, but then get a deal on a house when you're buying. So, um, but our goal is to just give as much information as possible, connect you with a great lender, so there are no surprises. So you'll know what you're going to walk away with from your sale, what you'll be able to apply towards the purchase. And we're going to make it as much of a win-win as possible. But that's that's another interesting part. I've, I just have been asked that question so many times. When's the right time to sell? Right. Today, yesterday. Yeah. 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 And I, I like when you brought that up at most uh, most of the time, a seller will be a buyer as well. And we tend to do focus on that sale so that we know what we can get, like you said. Um, yeah. But uh, that contributes a lot to, to how competitive that market can be as well. So keep in mind, as a seller who is also a buyer, now your offers that you are writing are contingent third, you know, first right contingencies. So that means you you have to be really certain about the buyer that you have in a contract for your home. So when you are making an offer, your offer looks great because a lot of times there's some first time home buyers out there who don't have a house to already sell. And there's a seller who's like, you know what, this is a clean sale there. I don't have to worry about the risk of a, something falling apart on their end to make that happen. So then that becomes a all right, I'm a seller, but I'm also a buyer. So now it's going to be a, even a little bit more difficult for me if I if I can't make this happen the right way. So th th again, that's when strategy sessions are important. That's when figuring out, all right, I'm going to be a, a link in this chain. Sometimes there's three or four transactions linked to this one transaction, which is why you need to yeah. number one, make sure you know what your you know what your buying power is. Make sure you know what your home could sell for in the market, and I mean accurate numbers. And when I talk about pricing something aggressively, making sure that you're not overpricing your home in the market, because bottom line, if even in a market like this, where homes are going above asking price, the reason most of the time they're going above asking price is because the, the agents are, are listening, listing them at a price where it'll get a lot of people interested. If you take that market into account and say, you know what? Oh, well, I know I can list my house for way more than that because of this or whatever reason. And then, then you run into a problem. Then you run into, okay, maybe I overpriced or overpositioned myself in the market. And now I'm scaring people away because it's too high. It's on that too high end. It might be a similar house and it, the other house could have gone for maybe a little bit less than that, but you want to take that into consideration as well. Um, yeah. Which then contributes to what can I do on the buy side? Because if my house not selling, then I'm not making the money I need to buy that next home. You raised two really good points that, that I love. First mm -hmm. of all, the cleanliness of a deal. Um, when there's a ton of people buying and selling, it is a huge game of dominoes. Um, and while the proceeds, the seller, in most cases, if they've lived in their house a few years, is going to have a ton of equity, they can write some very strong offers number-wise. Maybe 
the fact that, okay, we're playing a game of dominoes. You know, I need to sell my house and it's not under contract yet. Or, um, you know, and the timing can, can actually be a little bit detrimental or a little bit tougher to deal with. Whereas a buyer who's coming out of a lease, there's no contingencies, but they don't, maybe don't have the money saved or the equity. They don't have $50,000 in equity. Um, so th that, that does create kind of an, an interesting thing, how, um, the strength of one is kind of the weakness of another and vice versa. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. And, and then also talking about um, kind of strategies for selling your house. Um, I don't know how many times I, I have to tell people this, or I, I feel like I have to tell them that the list price is not the sales price necessarily. The list price is not the value of it. It's not what I think you can get for it. Um, so if uh, there's a, a house that I had listed last fall and some unforeseen circumstances came up, so we took it off the market. When we put it back on the market, though values have risen a little bit, I my strategy was to price it just a little bit lower than we did because of seasonality um, and because I felt like that would get more people interested in it at this time of the year versus when before, and then you end up getting the same amount. So um, or even more. So yeah, there's definitely a strategy. Um, and people again, will compare themselves to others or my, my neighbor sold their house, um, in the spring for this time and, or they sold it last summer for this. And yeah, we can't do that. Like that's not always the best strategy. So, um, right. I, I'm glad that you talked about that a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you always want to base those listings off of material facts. Uh, you know, square footage is always going to be a good one. Um, now, there are a lot of things that will contribute to how much a house can go for, because even if you have same square footage, but designed differently. Um, and I'm, it's funny you said the cleanliness of an offer, because I immediately thought the cleanliness of a home. If your home <laughs> is cluttered and no one can see themselves moving into it, that does like detract from it as well. So that if the price doesn't reflect the condition, then you, you know, you're going to run into some issues there. So when you talk about the cleanliness of things, let's make sure the house is clean too. <laughs> so yes, when you're doing your spring cleaning to get ready to list in the spring, uh, think about those things um, and then think about, all right, where do I want to price my home? And I I would almost be afraid if, if an agent's like, oh, we're going to price it way up here because everything else you want somebody that's been studying the market and who knows a strategy to to get you top dollar but to not push you out so far that people don't even take a second look at your house yeah. um yeah and so it's it's kind of one of those things where like if i'm gonna go if i see too many uh too many previews of a movie i feel like i've seen the movie already you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> so if i've seen enough houses that look exactly like your house. I feel like I've seen a house already. And for you to be charging maybe $30 for a ticket at this theater than, than a normal 15, because it's still expensive no matter what at a movie. Uh, <laughs> but it's the, the same thing. I'm going to go back to that other theater and look at it differently. I'm going to be like, hey, I, you know, I've seen most of the movie, but I definitely want to take a look at it. But for this price, I uh, hopefully yeah. that analogy makes sense. Maybe I should compare <laughs> yeah. food items next. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. No, it, it's 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 for real. Um, yeah, timing, timing is is crucial. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, I don't know what what else. Um, you know, has is there anything else that you want to talk about? I mean, we kind of hit the buyers, we kind of hit the sellers side of it. Um, yeah, um, man. You know what? Um, I want to say like, what are our what would be the top three uh, pieces of advice that you can give to a buyer in this market. And then the top three that you can give to a seller. Okay. That's awesome. Um, my number one for both is it's always the same for both start now, start yesterday. Um, people say, well, my lease ends in October. Perfect. Now's the perfect time to start. Well, at least I just signed a lease. I'm going to be looking a year from now. Perfect. Let's get together tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. you know, either way, because the more information you start gathering now, um, you'll be able to really put together a solid strategy and things may tweak a little bit between now and then, but, um, yeah, you got to get started somewhere for sure. Um, gosh, for buyers, um, I mean, just yeah. know someone, I uh, get with an agent that's very strategic, um, because there's more than one way to strengthen your offer. Um, 
I put together in our buyer consultations, a, a, I don't know how many different ways to strengthen your offer that don't necessarily have to do with money. Um, mm -hmm. So how, yeah, hire an agent, work with an agent that's very good at communication. Cause that's, that's, I don't know, you know, it's like kind of the 80%, I, I use 80, yeah. 20 all the time. 80% of it is just communication, you know, being able to communicate with the other agent, um, just stuff like that. Yeah. Strategy. I'm a huge strategy nerd. Um, mm -hmm. I love when, when younger agents come and how would you do this? Like, Oh yeah. Like, all right, let's, let's do it. <laughs> like, so yeah, Man. just being strategic in both again, you know, when you're going to sell your house, like you said, you don't want to, if, if you think you can get $300,000 for your house, don't start it at 320 and say, oh, well, maybe we'll just come down from there. No, start it at 280, 290, get more people interested and then it'll bid up maybe to, to the, over that. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, strategic communication start yesterday. <laughs> All right. That's awesome. And now, so not to copy you, but like my, my first one is starting out too, um, just because you never want to be the one that missed the boat because then mm -hmm. you end up having to swim to catch it and it is easy to drown. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Um, so you definitely want to start now. Um, and, and number two, I was going to say consult a professional, obviously a real estate agent, but not just any real estate agent. When I say a professional, a true professional, where you mentioned communication is key. Someone that communicates well can move within the market and new flash for everybody out there too. Um, this is not against any agents who've been in the business 15, 20 years. No, you guys are great, but I'm just saying it does not matter like how many years you've been doing it. What matters is how efficient you are at doing your job, how good you are, how professional you are at doing what you do. Because if I can, if I can see a new agent who is continuously trying to communicate at a high level, or continuously trying to to do good business, not just do business, but do good business to the point where it's like it's a it's sales, no matter what. It's a win-win for both sides. And they're able to make that happen through communication. I will take that agent 10 times out of 10 because I know that they're working hard for it. Um, and not to say that, you know, agents who've been doing it for a while don't do that. I'm just saying when it comes down to it, I want that person who's putting in the work and not relying on their time, you know, because time is money. So, I mean, if you've been in the business for 10 years and you've sold 50 homes, but that's 50 homes over 10 years, and then someone else has been in the business for, you know, three years and they've sold, you know, 40 homes, the average works out quite differently, just so you know. <laughs> Um, so keep that in mind. And then, uh, you know, thirdly is, uh, oh man, did he freeze up? Take Joseph. everything. Oh, uh -huh. oh I froze. It's like you're playing possum. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, third, not only do you want to listen to professionals, but take everything that everybody else tells you with a grain of salt. Okay. Because, and I always describe it this way. There's plenty of people that you probably know that maybe have bought and sold a home before, but the market is continuously changing, which is why we always work so much is because nothing's ever the same. There's trends that are the same, but the market will be different every time on how you approach it, right? Um, so take everything that you hear from the outside with a grain of salt. Obviously, you want to listen to your parents. Everybody has parents that have bought homes before at some point. And it's like, hey, when I bought my house, that was a different time, just so you know. So um, keep, uh, keep, I would say, keep in mind what you are, you are hearing from outside sources that are not in the business. And again, I'll tell you this analogy. So anybody who's bought or sold a home before is like going to an amusement park, okay? So you go to this amusement park known as real estate land. Whether you're a buyer or a seller means you're going to be riding the rides, okay? So you ride this roller coaster and you're like, oh my gosh, I had the best time on this roller coaster. I'm going to ride it again. Okay, cool. That's the second time you maybe bought or purchased or, you know, sold or, sold or, or purchased. Now you feel like you're an expert on this ride. Keep in mind now, in this amusement park, there's people actually operating those rides, making sure those rides are safe. <laughs> those are the real estate professionals. So you might have a friend who wants to join this amusement park for the first time. And I'm using amusement parks because it's summer. Typically, you go to amusement parks during the summer, right? So you have this friend who's who's new to the amusement park. You've ridden a couple of rides. You're like, oh, I'm an expert. I know exactly what I'm talking about. It's going to be this. We're going to get in the, in the ride. We're just going to take us up, do a loop-de-loop. -loop. That's fine. But 
you still don't know how to operate that ride. You know how to ride the ride. You don't know how to make that ride start and go. So keep that in mind. Real estate professionals are the ride operators and you as the buyer or seller are the amusement park goers. We want you to have a good time. We want it to be safe. But please, when it comes to the market and when it comes to operating this ride, think about us. Think about us doing that job. Hopefully that was a good enough analogy. Did that make sense? Hey, that was, yep, I got it. And yes, right. it is It is a amusement park time for sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. And I don't Man. know, what what would you say? Were you Are you a Kings Island fan or a, a Cedar Point? Maybe even a Six Man. Flags guy? I Kings Island's the one I've always been to. I've never made it up to Cedar Point. So, oh man. Um, yeah. Listen out. <laughs> I, 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 that's, I heard that's like coaster capital. It's good stuff. It is. It is. Oh man. man. <laughs> I am too much with these dang analogies, man. I'm so sorry. Uh, you are, I, I'm going to come up with a nickname for you. Oh yeah. boy. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's how I would say navigating through this market that's our take on it. Um, yeah. Anybody start now? <laughs> yeah. Start now. Um, that's the number one. Start now. And number number two, find that professional. And by the way, Scott, if people wanted to get in touch with you, how would they do so? My number is 765-427-2982. Uh, my business line is 765-201-7958. And emails, uh, our emails are easy now. It's just yeah, our yeah. name. Scott or Joseph at mm -hmm. slreg.com. What's your phone numbers? Oh, my phone number is 765-409-9285. That's my personal number, but you can reach me there too. And my business line is 765-201-7972. Don't be afraid to give us a call, shoot us a text. If you have any questions about the market at all, or even if like, hey, you know, is it a good time? Is it not a good time? Or I have this situation going on. Let us know. Um, we'd be more than happy to help you. Our, our main goal is to educate because we feel like if you are an educated buyer in this market, you are a strong buyer in this market. You'd be the difference between jumping in that pool and belly flopping or doing a beautiful swan dive and coming out on the other <laughs> side smooth. Man, uh, so yeah, uh, Antoine just texted in there, an amusement park and the weather change that day is a shift in the market. So I love that. Facts. Oh my gosh. That's Just good. add to the analogy. Like <laughs> exactly. So that means like how are we going to operate this ride now? Because I know as an amusement park goer, you're a little yep. bit sad. The market's shifting. But hey, yeah. we might know how to wait it out. Maybe I got some umbrellas for you. There's more than just riding a hey. ride. There's there's also food there. Funnel what happens to the to the crowd when it starts raining at Kings Island? That's Thins out, man. You can then you can hit hit more rides. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> thank Man. you for that Antoine uh does anybody else have any questions or any statements yeah any, drop them in the chat drop them in the chat any issues challenges frustrations like how I use that Scott <laughs> yeah that was good <laughs> we say that, that in good. our team meetings oh boy yeah man well, you know. I think I think that's probably I think we talked uh covered a lot of ground with buyers and sellers um no matter what your timing is, the time it's it's right for you. Don't don't believe you have to time it to to the market, to the trends, to your neighbors, to holidays, anything like that. Don't feel like you have to conform to them, man. Uh, real estate agents, if good ones, are open three sixty five. Uh, so hey, you know, take advantage of it. Don't don't feel like you have to do what everybody else is doing. Uh, right. Get a hold of me, Joseph. Anyone on our awesome team. Uh, and we'll we'll set you straight. We'll get you in the right direction and get you rolling. For sure, for sure. Well, Scott, man, it's been a pleasure, and I hope that we can do this again very soon. Um, there will be another webinar with uh, our our teammates Kendrick and Eddie in about two weeks, right? Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, awesome, awesome. So they will be covering some more stuff about today's market and uh, things to look out for. Again, our goal is to educate and uh, to get you through this market as smoothly as possible, safely. Um, but yeah, so we'll see you guys next time. And again, reach out if you have any questions. Awesome. Thanks. No problem. Thank you.